This narrative tells the story of Noah, a righteous man and survivor of a worldwide catastrophe known as the Great Flood. Noah explains how humanity's disobedience and sin led God to send a devastating flood, from which only his family was saved. This event followed acts of disobedience since the times of Adam and Eve, who were expelled from paradise for disobeying God. Noah, a descendant of Seth, was chosen by God to survive the flood and continue humanity due to his righteousness and obedience. In an ancient time, when humanity was closer to its origins and the world was new, people lived extraordinarily long lives, like Adam, who lived 930 years, and his descendants maintained similar longevity. These generations, taught to cultivate the land and maintain a relationship with God, included notable men like Enoch, who never died and had an especially close relationship with God, prophesying future events and showing extraordinary faith. His son Methuselah, whose name prefigured future events, continued the lineage of humanity, which gradually organized into more complex social structures and explored new forms of subsistence. Noah, one of his descendants, was born to alleviate the hardships of his people due to the curse of the ground imposed since Adam, faced a world plagued by the Nephilim, giants born from the union between fallen angels and human women, increasing chaos and sin on earth. Rebellious angels, known as the Fallen, and their descendants, the Nephilim, corrupted the earth with wickedness and violence. These powerful beings, born from the union between angels and humans, brought the world to a state of intense moral and spiritual corruption. Observing human depravity and ceaseless evil, God decided to eradicate humanity with a flood, except for Noah, a righteous and obedient man, and his family, who found favor in his eyes and were saved from destruction. Noah, a righteous and obedient man, stood up for his uprightness amidst a corrupted and depraved generation. Guided by his deep relationship with God, he lived a life marked by obedience and devoted service, similar to his great-grandfather Enoch. While humanity fell into sin and violence, Noah and his family, composed of his three sons Shem, Ham, and Japheth, were chosen by God to survive the impending divine judgment. Faced with global corruption, God planned to destroy the earth with a flood, but decided to preserve Noah and his family, instructing him to build an ark. This vessel, designed to shelter his family and representatives of every species of animals, was a large and water-resistant structure, prepared to withstand the floodwaters and serve as a testimony to God's power and mercy. Noah built an ark following God's divine instructions, intended to save his family and a pair of every animal species from the impending flood that would destroy all life on earth. The ark, more like a box than a boat, had a large and well-ventilated structure with a window for light and air, and multiple decks to accommodate living creatures and supplies. God made a covenant with Noah, promising to save him along with his family and the animals. Noah, trusting completely in God, obeyed every command with faith, filling the ark with enough provisions for all. This act was not only a preservation measure but also a symbol of divine promise and judgment. Noah, a righteous and devout man, was tasked by God to build an ark to save his family and a remnant of animal creation from divine judgment, a flood destined to wipe out human wickedness from the earth. With the help of his family, including his grandfather Methuselah and his father Lamech, Noah built the ark following specific divine instructions. To take seven pairs of every clean animal and two of every unclean animal. Despite obstacles and widespread disbelief, Noah persevered in his mission for 120 years, promoting righteousness and warning of the impending judgment. His commitment was a direct and obedient response to the divine mandate, demonstrating faith and fidelity in a world steeped in sin and rebellion. Despite mockery and skepticism, Noah completed the ark, a powerful symbol of salvation and judgment, and finally entered it before the flood that would eradicate earthly wickedness. After many years, Enoch was taken by God without experiencing death. God commanded him to build an ark and enter it with his family and animals, because he was righteous. Then, God sent a flood that covered the whole earth for forty days and forty nights. Noah and his family waited in the ark for seven days before the rain began. Afterward, all living creatures entered the ark as God had commanded, and God closed the door behind them. After 120 years of warning, the flood came just as God had said. Only Noah and those with him in the ark survived. The waters covered the whole earth, wiping out all life except that which was in the ark. After 150 days, the waters began to recede, and the ark came to rest on Mount Ararat. Though we face immense challenges, 
God is always present and can calm us in the midst of the fiercest storms. After the flood, the ark rested on Mount Ararat, where we waited for the waters to recede. Finally, the mountains emerged again. I sent out a raven and then a dove to see if the land was ready for us. The dove returned with an olive leaf, a sign of hope and renewal. After sending the dove and seeing it return with an olive leaf, I waited another seven days and sent it out again. This time it did not return, indicating that the land was already dry. We left the ark when God indicated, taking all the animals with us. After months of confinement, we finally began our new lives on the renewed earth. After a year on the ark, I emerged triumphant and alive, repopulating the earth with the creatures from the ark. I built an altar and offered sacrifices to God as a sign of my devotion. Although I risked extinction by sacrificing some animals, I did so to please God. God was pleased with my sacrifice and promised not to destroy the earth again, showing his satisfaction and love for humanity. God promised not to destroy the earth with another flood and blessed Noah and his descendants. He gave them authority over the animals and allowed them to eat meat, but not with its blood. This marks a new beginning, similar to the instructions given to Adam to populate and rule the earth, with the addition of permission to consume meat. God ordered to respect blood, as a symbol of life itself. Whoever sheds blood must be held accountable, whether human or animal, because humanity is made in the image of God. The mandate to investigate any bloodshed was established. God established a covenant with humanity and all creation, reaffirming the value of human life and the responsibility to protect it. Whoever sheds human blood must be held accountable before God. Furthermore, God commanded the multiplication of humanity to repopulate the earth. God promised never again to destroy the earth with a flood, establishing a covenant with all humanity and creation. The rainbow is the visible symbol of this covenant, reminding us of the divine promise of compassion and protection. God made a covenant with all life on earth, represented by the rainbow. This covenant guarantees his faithfulness to all generations. After the flood, my sons became the founders of humanity, though difficulties arose. One of them was the curse on Canaan due to an embarrassing incident where I ended up naked in my tent and my son Ham saw it. However, my other two sons, Shem and Japheth, acted with respect and covered my nakedness. Ham dishonored and mocked me while I was drunk. In response, I cursed him, and his son Canaan would be a servant to his brothers. This curse had lasting consequences, but evil persisted in the world. Nimrod emerged in a world newly created by God. He founded powerful empires but led people away from God. Although God wanted humanity to disperse and populate the earth, Nimrod and his people defied that will by congregating in the plain of Shinar and not seeking to expand or care for God's creation. This statement reveals humanity's constant opposition to God's will. Although humanity tends to rebel, divine will always prevails. Human defiance efforts are ultimately thwarted by God. God halted the construction of the Tower of Babel by confusing languages and dispersing people throughout the earth. Although impressive to people, it was simple for God. This event shows that his plans always prevail. My life exemplifies faith. Noah built an ark by faith to save his family. He came from a godly lineage obedient to God. His life shows that God delivers the righteous and that sin has consequences. Noah warned of the impending judgment. Noah was the result of generational obedience and faithfulness to God. In other words, being right with God, being right with others, and having a reverent and worshipful relationship with God. Behold, the Almighty Lord has the power to deliver the righteous from all kinds of trials and tribulations, and upon reflecting on my life, it is a marked reminder that sin will not go unpunished. The day of reckoning is fast approaching. Behold, his name was Noah, and this was his story. Allow me to pray for you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of this new day and for allowing us to connect through this medium. We ask that you pour out your love and light upon all those who have seen this video, guiding them on their journey and filling their lives with hope, peace, and strength. May each person find comfort in your words and find inspiration to face life's challenges with courage and faith. We ask that you protect their families, bless their endeavors, and guide them in every step they take. May your infinite grace accompany them at all times and may your love surround them like a protective mantle. Amen.